Hi, my name is Kabir. Through thick and thin, this toy has made a Lego see for itself. Legos are one of the world's most loved toys, and this is their story. Our story starts in the quiet, remote village of Billund, Denmark, where an expert carpenter was working on his new creation. This man was named Ole Kirk Christensen. He was born on April 7, 1891. Old Kirk Christensen was a carpenter making furniture and housing supplies, as it was his family's business. But during the Great Depression, which was a great economic failure, nobody could afford furniture, so he began making toys. His first toys were made from wood, but soon wood would become expensive due to the inflation remnants of the Great Depression. In 1934, he made a decision that would change his life, and soon the lives of millions of people around the world. He decided to shift to making toys out of plastic. And unlike wood, plastic was much cheaper because it was manufactured locally. He called his company Legodit, which meant play good in Danish. He soon changed it to Lego because the initial name was too long. Then in 1942, the Nazis occupied Denmark and burned his shop. But thankfully, Christensen restarted. Following the purchase of a plastic molding injection machine in 1947, he started to make plastic bricks. He called his creation Lego Automatic Binding Bricks and stated it to Lego Bricks. On March 1, 1958, old Kirk Christensen sadly passed, leaving the company in his third son's hands. His son, Got It Fred, establishes the Lego system of play and introduces minifigures, which are Lego people. In 1973, Lego bricks arrived in America. Legos are great at enhancing kids' creativity, and they have the power to make kids' imagination a reality. People who play with Legos are very skilled with building. Lego is a fun toy that channels a kid's feelings into a toy. Legos are also highly successful at soothing stress and are great for building. Lego later introduced themed lines, including Town in 1978, Castle in 1978, Space in 1979, Pirates in 1989, Western in 1996, Star Wars in 1999, and Harry Potter in 2001. Figures with movable arms and legs were introduced in 1978 as well. In addition to that, Lego has won the Toy of the Century Award twice for its outstanding quality. Goddard Fred also introduces Lego Duplo, a bigger Lego block for toddlers. After that, things become a blur. In 1958, Lego gets a patent. In 1995, the first Lego video game is released. In 2014, the Lego movie is made. Then, the first Legoland is opened in Billund, Denmark. Lego is even doing things to combat climate change. By 2030, it wants to have a clean substitute for its plastic. Lego's motto is only the best is good enough, and it is certainly living up to it. This is the history of Lego from past to present. Thank you for watching. Bye. I have multiple colors I made of wax. What am I? My name is Captain, and if you guess crayons, you are correct. All kids love crayons, and as children, our favorite memories are with crayons. We all love to color to our heart's content. But did you ever wonder about the history of crayons? I've never wondered about the history. But after doing some research on it, I wonder why I've never looked into it before. I learned a lot, and it was fun learning how crayons came to life and how they've evolved over time. In this video, I will tell you about the history of this fun tool. To start off, crowns were first invented in 1902 by Edwin Binney and Cyril Smith in Easton, Pennsylvania. The first crowns were sold in 1903. They were made with a mixture of charcoal and oil. First, it was used for industrial purposes, but the cousins Edwin Binney and Cyril Smith thought it should be used for other things. Eventually, the cousins were able to create crowns so kids could have fun and play with it. The first crayon color ever created was black because it was the easiest color to make. The first box of Crayola crayons came in an eight count box. The box had the colors red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. It said crayons symbolize having a carefree attitude, free from responsibilities or obligations. Now you must be wondering why they are called crayons. In French, it means chalk pencil and it dates to the 16th century. As for Crayola, the term was created by Edwin Binney's wife, Alice. She combined the French word cray, meaning chalk, with oleaginous, meaning oily. Basically, it means oily chalk, as crayons are made from parfum wax and colored pigment. Now comes the fun part. Let me share some fun facts about crayons. 
The first box of crayons only had eight crayons and it cost five cents. Today, that same box of crayons cost $1.59. Can you believe that? In the past, crayons were hand applied. Now they are wrapped by machines. Another fun fact is that 3 billion crowns are made per year, and the biggest box of crowns has 96 crowns. As of today, there are 120 different colors of crowns, and America's favorite crown color is blue. Crowns are also one of the most recognized scents in the nation. In conclusion, who would have thought something as common as a crown could have so much history? Crayola crowns have always been part of our lives, and yet no one really knows the history behind them. It was interesting to learn about crayons and how they've evolved over the years. I especially enjoyed learning tidbits and fun facts about crayons. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Bye! Hello, my name is Reticia. Susan B. Anthony was born in Adams, Massachusetts on February 15, 1820. Her parents, Lucy Reed and Daniel Anthony, were Quakers, and she, too, was raised to be one. She had seven siblings who all grew up to be activists. Susan B. Anthony was a social reformer and women's rights activist, known as a suffragist. Suffragists are activists who work towards the women's suffrage, the campaign for women's rights. They also stand up for voting rights, particularly for women. Susan was a very precocious child, as by the age of three, she could read and write. Her whole life, her parents engraved in her that no matter what, everyone deserves to be treated equally. She worked towards the anti-slavery movements as well by 17 years old. In 1851, she met Elizabeth Cady Stanton. The two activists worked hard and traveled to many states giving speeches about women's suffrage to ensure that women have the same rights as men. Later, Susan B. Anthony realized that no one would take women seriously when it came to politics if they did not have the right to vote. So they fought long and hard for women's rights to attend college, have control of their property, have the right to vote, and having more options for professions. They stood up for women of all color. All of this led to the 19th Amendment, the law enforcing women's rights. It took three-fourths of the House members and two-thirds of the Senate to add this amendment to the Constitution. Susan B. Anthony also led campaigns against alcohol. Over the 1850s, however, Susan B. Anthony was more focused on the abolishment of slavery. But as she became more aware of the mistreatment women were facing in society, she shifted her focus to the women's suffrage. She influenced women's rights by voting herself in 1872. People bullied and harassed her, but she did not back down. The voters questioned her about whether she truly counted as a citizen or not. But Susan promptly answered these questions and got her ballot inside the box. One famous quote from Susan B. Anthony is, I declare to you that women must not depend upon the protection of man, but must be taught to protect herself, and these I take my stand. Susan and her fellow activist, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, also joined the National American Women's Suffrage Association in 1890. Susan became president of the organization in 1892, succeeding Elizabeth. Sadly, she passed away on March 13, 1906, in Rochester, New York, at the age of 86 from heart failure and pneumonia. Susan B. Anthony did many remarkable things in her life. She will forever be remembered as the woman who majorly contributed to women's voting rights, freedom, and the abolishment of slavery. She is one of the most prominent figures in the history of women's rights and helped the campaign impact the society by finding numerous cases and encouraging forming ideas for women's benefit. She devoted her life to fighting for women's equals rights and changed the minds of many people. She helped pass the 19th Amendment, which allowed women to vote and influenced most people to pay women the same as men. It was we, the people, not we, the white male citizens, nor yet we, the male citizens, but we, the whole people who formed the union. Men, their rights, and nothing more. Women, their rights, and nothing less. This is a quote from Susan B. Anthony. In memory of this woman, the U.S. made a one dollar coin in her name, the Susan B. Anthony coin. These coins can still be found today. Susan B. Anthony will forever be remembered as an American women's right activist. Thank you for watching this video.
Hello, my name is Ahan and welcome to the Brookville Media Project. The origin of Cinco de Mayo started because of Mexico's victory over France in the Battle of Puebla on May 5th, 1862. Due to this event, Cinco de Mayo is also known as Battle of Puebla Day. This holiday is not big in Mexico. However, in USA, it has become a major holiday of Mexican heritage. Contrary to popular belief, Cinco de Mayo is not Mexican Independence Day. In 1861, a lawyer and member of the Zapotec tribe, a native tribe of Mexico, Benito Juarez, was elected president of Mexico. At the time, Mexico was in financial ruin after years of internal conflict, and the new president was forced to pay debt to European governments after France, Britain, and Spain demanded their repayment. They also negotiated the withdrawal of Mexican forces. France decided to use the opportunity and make militias from Mexican territory, and they soon stormed Veracruz, a city and state in Mexico, and drove Juarez and his government into retreating. Soon after, France saw success coming and set out 6,000 French troops to a small town in central East Mexico, Puebla de Los Angeles. Juarez formed a loyal ragtag force of 2,000 men and sent them to this town on May 5, 1862. Although the Mexicans were outnumbered and poorly supplied, they prepared an assault and won the war on the same day at dusk. People celebrate Cinco de Mayo in Mexico by military parades, recreations of the Battle of Puebla and other festive events. In the United States of America, people celebrate Cinco de Mayo by parades, parties, mariachi music, Mexican folk dancing, and traditional foods such as tacos and mole poblano. Thank you for watching the Brookville Media Project. Hello, my name is Kabir. What if you logged onto your computer, but a huge exclamation mark pops up? or your computer crashes often and unknown sites pop up. Congratulations, you have been hacked. Hacking or being hacked is not a good thing. It is the act of when an anonymous person forcibly gets their way into your computer digitally and has access to all your personal information. Hacking is not the only thing that is dangerous on the internet. You can be cyber bullied, the act of being bullied online. You, you can be cyber stalked, the act of being stalked online, or you could have a virus on your screen. Now, do not go ahead and look at your device in fear. Devices have a bunch of benefits, but they come with their dangers. Let us start with how the internet came to be. The idea for the internet is credited to Leonard Kleinrock, but it was created by a man named Tim Berners-Lee in 1989. He called his creation the World Wide Web and said it should be for all and that no person should be able to control it. The same year the internet was created, the first hacker came to be. A man named Robert Morris had developed a worm in Cornell University. Since then, hacking has increased. In fact, as I speak, millions of people are getting hacked. Two huge hacks were Yahoo in 2013. Three billion users' personal information and security was released. First American Financial Corp, an American real estate and mortgage insurer, revealed that in May of 2019, it left 900 million sensitive customer files exposed. You can prevent hacking though. You could download an anti-hacking software such as McAfee or DuckDuckGo. You could also download a password manager. A password manager helps to strengthen your password. Also avoid clicking on sites or links that you do not know. And never answer unknown or fraud callers. This is how you can avoid being hacked. Let us move on to the next topic. Cyberbullying. Cyberbullying can be done through social media or games. Some cyberbullies post your picture online and criticize them, or they may bully you in a video game or a chatting platform. Fortunately, you can avoid being cyberbullied. Step one, do not make any enemies. Cyberbullies sometimes target their victims for revenge. Step two, do not post any personal and or classified information or pictures on the internet. This way, cyberbullies have nothing to criticize. Step three, if you get cyberbullied, do not respond. Then take a screenshot so you have evidence of the bullying. After that, tell your parents slash guardian at once. Tell the truth and the whole truth. With these steps, you can avoid being cyberbullied. The internet is a fantastic place, but you just need to know how to stay safe. This is the 
Gilbert Field Media Project. Thank you for listening. Bye!